Hey, how's everybody doing today? I uh, hope you're having a great week. And I know that uh, um, it's a beautiful day out today. And I hope that it's a good day where you're at too. Um, we're going to start out in Psalms today. And, and I'm going to just read a passage in Psalm 61. And this is something that David pray, prays about a lot or sings about a lot during the Psalms. And it says, God, you have heard my vows. You've given me a heritage to those who fear your name. Add days to the king's life. May his years span many generations. May he sit enthroned before God forever. Appoint faithful love and truth to guard him. Then I will continually sing of your name, fulfilling my vows day by day. You know, David prays a lot and sings a lot about uh, the, the rule or the reign of the king. And he's talking about himself there, but also by the Holy Spirit, he's also talking about Jesus. So sometimes you might've asked yourself the question, well, you know what, I'm not a king. What do I care about reigns and rules and everything else? Well, the reason that we should care is because of what we find in Romans chapter eight. And we're gonna be in verse 12. And it says, so then brothers, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. All those led by God's spirit are God's sons. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children and if children also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ seeing that we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. So when David was singing in the Psalms, writing Psalms about the eternal reign of the king, he was singing about us as well as he was singing about himself. And that's why those words should have special meaning for us in that all the kingdom that Christ is going to inherit, he's already inherited it before he, but until he comes into actual possession of it, which will happen at the second coming, that's the hope of believers because not only is Jesus going to reign, but the word says we're going to reign with him because we're co-heirs along with him of everything that's been promised to Christ. And a lot of that is outlined in the Psalms. And so when you get to those verses in the Psalms where it talks about, you know, the reign of the king and that God's going to subdue all of his enemies underneath his, under his feet. And it's talking about you as well as it's talking about David and about Jesus. And so, that's how we see the Psalms. And that's why the Psalms are so meaningful to us because there's, there's so many things in Psalms about um, asking for God's protection, but also that talks about our future inheritance that we will receive when, when Christ returns and when we're gonna rule with him. You know, for believers, we're going to um, meet him in the air. He's gonna return in the air and rapture the church. And then we're gonna return to him and subdue the earth and that's when he's gonna, all of his enemies will be defeated and everything that has been made wrong because of sin and because of the evilness of man will be made right once again. So we have that to look forward to. You know, I do have people that have asked, well, what about, you know, how does this, this whole coronavirus thing uh, pan out for the end times? And the, the bottom line is I have no idea, <laughs> um, you know, the, for one thing, I don't think we're really going to understand uh, everything that's happening right now until later. And I think we're going to be talking about a lot of things that are going on now for years. But the, um, the, the end times prophecy, there are a lot of different elements to it, but most of it really does revolve around the Middle East and around Israel. So if you want to know and kind of keep an eye on what's happening towards the end, America is not the place to look, really. We're not even mentioned in by anyone's interpretation in the end times prophecy. Most of that centers around Israel and around the Middle East. So we, we always need to keep our eye on uh, what's going on there. And we always need to do our best to support Israel and to support um, uh, that, that country in everything that they're doing. But in the meantime, you know, I hope that you'll take some comfort in knowing that, you know, David talked about and, and God promised to David uh, a reign that would last forever, that, that his descendants would reign on the throne forever. And through Christ, we're, we're, we're the descendants he's talking about. That not only is it talking about Jesus in particular, it's also talking about us. That we're, we're gonna reign with him because we're co-heirs 
along with him of the throne and of the kingdom that was promised through David to us. So when you come to those passages in scripture um, in the Psalms, you think, well, that doesn't really have anything to do with me. Go back and look at it again and just make sure. Um, I'm going to read that, that last part of Psalms again, and, and I want you to hear it really more as though it's speaking of you and not someone else. God, you've heard my vows. You have given a heritage to those who fear your name. Add days to the king's life. May his years span many generations. May he sit enthroned before God forever. Appoint faithful love and truth to guard him. Then I will continually sing on your name, fulfilling my vows day by day. So that's the hope that someday we will sit with God, we'll be, we'll be with him in heaven, and that we will sing the praise of his name forever. So I hope that's an encouragement to you. hope you guys have a great week, and I hope you can join us online Sunday for worship service. Have a great day and be blessed.